Beautiful bean footage. <laughs> How am I supposed to model after you called me beans? <laughs> That's okay. Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in. Today I will be doing an assumptions video. A lot of you guys sent some assumptions about me on Twitter and on Instagram, as well as some questions that you had left over from my first get to know me. And I'll be doing this psychedelic pastel mushroom tutorial for you guys, so I hope that you enjoy this look, that you guys aren't mean to me in these assumptions, that you guys aren't being shady with these questions. So let's get into it. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is apply my contacts off of camera. It's really awkward to put it on on camera. Just gluing down my hairline so I can prep for this wig later. So the way that this is gonna go with the assumptions is I'm going to be doing my makeup. There's assumptions and questions that people submitted. So Mr. Krem is gonna be reading these to me while I'm doing my makeup. One assumption is your personality completely transforms when you're in drag. I feel like that's kind of like a half and half. I feel like my personality partially transforms. I would say like, I feel definitely like more outgoing. Drag queens have said this before and it's like, drag is kind of like your license to kill. <gasps> this is like your like, get away with murder sort of thing. So it's like, you can get a away with a lot as a drag queen. And I think like just being in drag like changes your personality a little bit. Um, just because you have that freedom, you're like somebody else. So I'm going to apply my DHC Velvet Skin Coat to the areas that I have a little bit more texture. I saw a picture online of these earrings that are super cute, but it's these right here. I'll put the picture up next to me. They're like really cute like mushroom 60s like earrings. So I mixed up my colors right here. I have my overall face color my contour shade and then white for the highlight. If you want to see how I mix together these colors, check out my Lisa Frank Neon Fantasy video that I did earlier. I did use my CC Beauty palette with Mayron Clown White Light. I did do the pink, the blue, and the white. So I'm just using a really dense foundation brush to apply that all over. You had an emo face. Yeah. I did not have an emo phase. I had a goth phase. That's still not really over. But I was like the world's like most pretentious child. Like I was alive and well during the emo era. I should have been emo, but I was like, no, emo is a stepping stone to goth, so why would I do that? I'm just gonna go straight to goth. And I was like the most classist, like pretentious child about that because I like did not like emos. I was like, emos are posers, like that whole like argument so I just smoothed out the skin with the sponge. Now I'm just gonna like highlight and contour. What should have been my emo phase was definitely just like a goth phase. Like I was really into like Susie and like Peter Murphy and like all of the stuff that like kids my age didn't really listen to. But I managed to find one more goth in my town and we became friends. But I was definitely very like anti-emo at the moment which is really funny because I'm like finding that like so many drag queens now are like reliving their emo fantasy and I'm like cannot relate but I started listening to some things and I like some stuff what's the hardest slash longest drag look you have done oh that's a really good question I feel like I don't my looks don't really take that long like regardless of like level of difficulty so I'd probably say like the first time that I did like 
a different color skin tone in drag. I did, I think, blue for the first time and it took me like four hours <laughs> to like paint because I like had no idea what, what I was doing. And I think like looking back to like the first like skin color, like blue look that I ever did, I was actually using like water activated colors but like putting it on like a cream. It was very complicated and it looked good in the sense that like it would look terrible on me now but like at the time I was like whoa this is revolutionary but that took like four hours probably anything that involves me like putting flat back pearls on my face just because they're like super annoying to grab with tweezers so I'm just taking my Anastasia A4 brush it's just a regular concealer brush and using that to apply like the contour I do want to go over another question that I went over in my first Q&A, but like people keep asking me the same question like over and over and over again, and I'm sure it's not going to stop after I answer it again. And it's like, I'm a woman that wants to do drag, how do I get started? And I said, if you want to start doing drag, just start doing drag. But a lot of people don't seem to be very satisfied with that answer. So I want to clarify a few things for you while I do my nose contour. So I'm going to take a little highlight, go down the center of my nose. See how I have that right here? I'm going to put a little bit of white on my sponge and then blend that out. Putting a little bit more white under my eye because I just want it to be a little bit brighter in that area. And then I'm going to take a little bit of white on that concealer and like cut my cheek. So y'all want the tea. You want the tea. You want the real tea. You want the real exact, exactly how it's happening, real, what's going on, like completely uncensored tea. Give it to me now! About how to get into drag slash what it's like to be a female drag queen. So I kind of gave you the very general answer of like just like doing drag and that's literally exactly how it is, and I don't know how to explain that any further. There's no counsel. There's no, like, <laughs> insert photo of those, like, four memes that are the counsel. There's no counsel for drag. Like, nobody is going to sit. There's no, like, citywide counsel that gets to decide whether you cannot do drag or whether you can do drag. But literally, the only way to start doing drag is to put on drag makeup, put on a wig, change up your style and start just putting yourself out there. When I started doing drag, I experimented with makeup on my the Instagram that I have now before I changed my name back when I was a regular everyday person. I would literally just post photos of like my makeup experiments and like hashtag like drag and stuff on them. Um, and that was like my experience into doing drag makeup. Through there, I met a bunch of people that would look up those tags on Instagram. I met a lot of like um, LA drag queens. This is how I got into like doing drag. When I lived in a small town, that's where I lived when I started doing drag. I lived in not like a small town, but a smaller city, a suburb. I lived in a suburb, which is where my parents still live now, which was 45 minutes outside of San Francisco. So when I started doing drag, I was working at Starbucks like super bored i had um some training in theater friends drag queens hunty men um i went to the american conservatory theater in san francisco i had a screenwriting degree and like every person that works in film or wants to work in film and has those degrees i ended up working at starbucks <laughs> I'm going to be using this Anastasia liquid lipstick in violet for my eyebrows with this watercolor square paintbrush. But yeah, I was living in a small town with my parents, like a suburb with my parents, um, working at Starbucks, um, being absolutely <laughs> bored out of my mind. And like really feeling like nobody understood me. I didn't really have a lot of friends, like period, like growing up like in school or like in anything just because I felt like a lot of people really didn't understand me ooh she's different okay so I had to like tone down a lot of like my creativity my ideas my like personality and stuff 
as much as I could, which was like weird because I was literally that goth wearing like six inch boots and like fairy wings to school <laughs> to say that that was like turning it down. But like for me it was. And like not a whole lot of people like understood that. I had maybe like one good friend in high school. I was like really, really sheltered too. I was super, super shy. <laughs> I went to school in San Francisco both for my film degree and for my degree in theater but I took like like public transportation there I had never driven on a freeway before it was like very weird like that uh, my sister and I had started watching like a lot of drag race and a lot of drag stuff and I was like this is literally like what I'm looking for like I hated theater school because I am not a huge theater person but also because I didn't have the control that I wanted. So I started experimenting a lot with drag makeup because I'm like, this encompasses a lot of the things that I actually want to do. So I went to theater school to kind of like rid myself of shyness by like embarrassing myself to the fullest. I don't know what that kind of therapy is called, do you know? Where it's like you're so afraid of something so you just do it. And so you're not afraid of it anymore. Oh, maybe like an immersion or exposure therapy. Yeah, like immersion or exposure therapy, which was exactly like how I took theater school for me. It's like I had the desire to like act or be on stage in some kind of way. But like, I was like really, really painfully shy um, and like very depressed as a kid too. Um, and that was kind of like my way of dealing with that. So flash forward to like finding out about drag and being like that's literally what I want to do. I just started experimenting with doing makeup like not knowing anything about it like trying to watch maybe like one or two tutorials but like they weren't very helpful for me. I have to like learn to do something by actually doing it um, like more hands-on so I just like started trying to learn how to do makeup and like posting my attempts to Instagram and using like all the hashtags and stuff. So through there, I need to start putting these eyebrows on because this lipstick is drying. That looks good. But basically through posting online and using those hashtags, I became friends with a lot of drag queens that were um, just basically like around the country, a lot of them in LA. Um, and then a few of the queens that I was like mutuals with in LA, um, they used to work for the Boulay Brothers. Hello, uglies. So they would work um, all of the Dragula events. Back before Dragula was a show, it was a party, but they went up to the Eagle in San Francisco and they would do Dragula the pageant there. The Boulays have always been very inclusive and very um, aware of all these types of different types of drag. They've always been very, very good to me. Um, a lot of the drag queens that I was following in LA invited me to Dragula and I had never been to like really like a real drag show before and Dragula the party was like my first immersion into that and again before this I was literally only doing my makeup and posting stuff online so I drove myself all the way to San Francisco and that was like a huge deal for me at night an even bigger deal my parents I'm sure were like super worried about me in like as best of drag as I could get into and I'll put a picture of what I wore to Dragula or the face that I did because they got my picture taken that night and I'll put it like somewhere around here but I went there um, and I had just like a really really good time with all of the queens um, I saw like everything that happened the pageant was like so like amazing and like magical to me at the time I had never been in anything like that and it just kind of like blew my mind and also was like oh everybody here gets it they get what I'm going for they get what I'm doing and it was just kind of like a feeling of like oh finally finally somebody gets it so from there I just kept going to different parties in San Francisco. I would say maybe a year after being like a club kid, just going to different parties. And I would show up like an hour early to these parties. Like if the party said nine, I would show up at nine. But we all know that that means that the party is like at midnight. Um, 
but I was like super sheltered at that point and like didn't know any better um and I would go to these parties and just kind of like go in like different looks and try to outdo myself every time and like the queens there would like gas me up so I was like really feeling it um and after about like a year or so of like going out as a club kid um one of my friends was like oh you have to move here if you actually want to have a career in drag so I literally put in my two weeks and I was like great now I have to find a place to live my two weeks to transfer so I was going to transfer from Starbucks there to Starbucks in San Francisco, which is where I had that crazy experience with the python. But at the very same time, my drag mom's roommate was moving out. So it was like, perfect. I moved into my drag mom's house um, in the outer sunset. And my other drag mom also moved in at the same time. So it was like literally a drag house. And then I spent the next like three years there um, in this like amazing drag, literally drag house, like all we would do all the time is do new drag, do shows all the time, like work on concepts, work on numbers, do all this stuff. We all had very different um, things that we were good at. I was like more of like a makeup person. My other drag mom who now owns Wigs by Tiffs was like getting into hair and like doing wigs and was like very good with that and was like known for doing that. My other drag mom, Scarlet Letters, was like an amazing like visionary when it came to like putting production numbers together and like a dancer so she had all this great choreography so we would all exchange basically our talents and our ideas um, to do everything and San Francisco I'm very lucky that I started drag in San Francisco because lots of different kinds of people have been doing drag in San Francisco for a very long time and women have been doing drag much much longer than I have before I even came around. So it was like definitely not an issue when it came to whether or not I was allowed to do drag or whether or not it would be an acceptable thing. So I was very lucky in that sense that like I didn't have to ask anybody for permission, like I didn't live somewhere that was like more ignorant of those sorts of things. Um, so I was pretty lucky as far as that goes. And then I did get to have so many years literally living with drag queens and like really perfecting and kind of solidifying my character and who I was as a drag queen. So kind of to wrap it up, there's no council that says that you can or cannot do drag. The only way to start doing drag is to start doing drag. Kind of like I explained, I literally just posted pictures of myself in drag makeup, found a community of people, began to hang out with them, and different opportunities presented themselves. That being said, if you want those kinds of opportunities, you're going to have to be nice. <laughs> you're going to have to be cool to hang out with. You can't be catty. This is the number one advice that I give to people that are starting out a drag career or like starting to travel and starting to do all that stuff. It's great entertainment when you see it on TV, but being shady and being like mean or being rude or being catty and like starting rumors about people, that kind of stuff like does not fly in real life. Like that's treat drag like you treat your regular job. You're not gonna get professional opportunities if you're not a professional person. That doesn't mean that you take what people give to you or you take what you don't deserve in order to like keep the peace. Always ask for what you deserve and what you know that you deserve. Always make sure that you're pricing yourself accordingly, that you're putting up boundaries accordingly, and if people don't respect that, then you can just like literally not do anything. You don't have to do it. There's nothing that you have to do. But don't go out into drag and think that this is your opportunity to play that high school mean girl that you didn't get a chance to do in real life. That is not what it is. And that ends a career real quick and I've seen it over and over and over again and I'm still waiting for some people to catch their karma. I won't say who. It's what she deserves. Oh my- That being said, how do I go get gigs? How do I get gigs? Okay. Literally just ask. Like, if there's people in your city that have a show, ask them if you could be in the show. And then come prepared. Be pleasant, be professional, be cordial backstage. Don't get up before your number and not, like, know how to do anything. 
treat it like your job. If you truly want to do drag, you have to show that you love it. Okay, so I went ahead and set my face with my RCMA translucent powder in a powder puff. Now I'm going to go into my Norvina Volume 3 in the shade C4 and then start that as like the first shade in my contour. So just being nice, being good, even if you feel like you did a really bad performance your first time, as long as you're nice and you're courteous and people like you, they will continue to ask you back because you're pleasant and you're nice to be around. So I just put a quick like cover here so that I don't mess up the makeup that's underneath it. I'm going to go into my Norvina Volume 1 palette and I'm going to go into the shades A2 and B5. Those are going to be my other shades for this contour. Okay, so I'm going to take the Taco by Sugar Pill Shadow and then my sponge and then go around my nose to kind of slip it a little bit and then tap underneath my eye with that. And then I'm taking the brush that I contoured my nose with, and this one is from Hip Dot. It's like an angled brush. I'm just brushing off any that might have gotten in areas where I didn't want it to be. I'm going to do a little RCMA around my mouth and around my under eye area to clean up a little bit easier. As you can see, I did my brows already, but I am going to go over that with some like eyeshadow just to brighten it up a little bit. I'm taking Girl Crush Liquid Lipstick from Sugar Pill and a really fine watercolor brush. And I'm going to make like really fine hair like strokes. Now I'm going to go into Violet and then do some hair like strokes at the end of my brow. Okay, so now I'm going to go into Norvina Volume 4 into shade C2, which is this bright pink here. And right on the inner corner of that eye. But I actually don't really want to do too much of a cut crease this time. I just want to give like the illusion of one in the front of the eye and then kind of blend it out to nothing, basically. And for this, I'm using the Morphe M573. So I'm going to further intensify that by going into E5. Now I'm going to take a clean brush and go into C4. And this is the Anastasia A12 brush. I'm going into C1 with an A12 brush and buffing out that pink to give it a really nice soft fade. So now I'm going to take this small blending brush from ColourPop, this is the E9, go into C2 and go around the eye. I'm going to go into a little bit of clown white and cut my crease. So I pretty much only did kind of like a half cut crease, so I only did like from here and then blended it in to this part which doesn't have anything on it. Now I'm going to go in with a little bit of sugar pill taco and set that. I'm going to push some taco into the brow bone as well. But like I was saying, um, as far as like getting what you deserve, you just have to ask for it. Um, a lot of people also ask me about discrimination in the drag scene. They always want to know what the discrimination is. I talked about it before and how I don't really like to answer those types of questions anymore, but a lot of people seem to have a lot more questions about that despite me saying that I don't want to answer questions about it. So, have I experienced discrimination in the drag scene. Absolutely. Yes, of course I have. In San Francisco, no. Where I started doing drag physically, no. I never had that experience. However, online, there's going to be a lot of people that have a lot of things to say about your drag. I would say like 90% of the time, those people don't do drag. So why would I take their opinion seriously? There's always gonna be a lot of butthurt men, specifically that don't want women to do drag for whatever trivial reason that they've come up with on that day and are just gonna run with that reason and like list off the reasons why you can't do drag but literally like that kind of stuff like I don't really pay attention to. I know in myself and I'm confident in myself and I've worked my <laughs> off my entire career to be where I'm at and to be given the opportunities that I have been given in my career. That didn't come from me sitting and crying about what men decided to say about my drag and I didn't let that interfere with 
what I was really striving for, somebody, somebody in their opinions of what I do has no relevance to my goals. So their criticism of whatever I do is not going to hinder my ability to go after what I want to go for. So I would just say that, have I had my share of discrimination? Yes. Have I been in awkward situations with cis male drag queens where they think it's appropriate to like grab your boobs and stuff because like you're a drag queen too but like no you're actually like a human woman that does not like being violated. Yes, I've been in plenty of those kinds of situations and it's okay to put up boundaries in that time and there's just going to be some people that like don't get it. There's going to be some people that truly, truly do not get it. And my best advice for you is just to stay far away from those people. That's all you can really do. As far away as you can, try to avoid those people if you can. Um, as far as like criticism on the internet goes, I generally just tend to block people. My page and my posting of things, it's not for you. It's for me. It's for me to share like the things that I've been working on and the things that I've been doing. It's not a place for like somebody to come in and give criticism where I never asked. And there's always like the person that's like the devil's advocate, right? The one that's like, well, how are you going to expect to grow if you don't get criticism? And it's like, I can ask from criticism from people that I respect, but random strangers on the internet whose opinion I give no value to in that way, it's not going to affect me. Some like random man saying something to me on my Instagram is not going to um, change the way that I do anything. If I ask the people around me that know me, that are friends with me, their honest opinions and their advice, if I ask somebody that I really respect for their opinion, then I would take it seriously. But random people on the internet, no. It's easier said than done, especially if you don't like seeing mean things about yourself written. But literally, there's nothing better than just deleting it and pretending it never happened. That's all I have to say. That was the tea. I've been through a lot of situations, I've lost a lot of friends with people that I thought supported me up until a certain point that it made them uncomfortable. I've had all of those experiences with people that react inappropriately towards you or that treat you differently. I've had those experiences, not necessarily all where I started doing drag, but as I began to travel and do all these things. You're always going to have these experiences. You're going to have experiences where you're like going on stage and somebody is like, and now welcome the drag queen with a vagina. And you're like, oh, Jesus, gross. This is embarrassing, but I'm about to collect this check and walk out of here. Period. <laughs> like it just, there's just certain things that like are gonna change eventually once people start having the discourse and there's gonna be things that happen to you that you're not gonna like that you're just gonna have to learn within yourself how to deal with those so yes there's a lot of that comes with the good but if you truly love doing drag then it's just part of it nothing that you love doing or nothing especially that's as public as drag is doesn't come without like criticism and just yeah that's it welcome to drag <laughs>